I'm Keith Cambrin, and this is the course How the Internet Works. This is Hour 2, Section 2, Domain Name System. The domain name system is under the auspices of the Internet Corporation for Assigned Name to Numbers. It's administered by IANA. Uh, the Internet Assigned Number Authority, uh, but it's operated by registrars. Uh, registrars can either be private corporations or government entities. Uh, in this uh, segment, we're going to use our example of maps.google.com to illustrate how the domain name system works. We begin by uh, recognizing that the domain name system is a tree structure with the root of the tree, in this case com, a top-level domain. Uh, top-level domains can be organized either generically or by country code. Um, generic examples that we're all familiar with are .com and .net, as well as uh, .gov uh, and others that are shown here. The generic top-level domains are um, generally uh, operated by private corporations like VeriSign and Newstar. Uh, country code top-level domains like uh, DE for Germany, Deutsch, Ellen, uh, CN for China, ES for España, and so forth are operated by either government en entities uh, or their delegates. So here's a general view of how the domain name system works. If we start at our host and we're going to make a query, HTTP query, to maps.google.com, uh, then our service, which is HTTP or actually the web service uh, using HTTP, is going to call on the DNS service on the host that host service uh, serves not only a web request but also email requests, FTP, and other services that are compatible with a domain name system and use the internet. The request is a UDP request, uh, so it is uh, connection-less, and it is sent to a DNS server. And the next slide will show uh, how we find that server. Uh, the request um, is forwarded and it may uh, specify a record type. Uh, there are um, multiple, a uh, couple of dozen of record types that are maintained within the domain name system. And the query is directed to a namespace, in this case google.com, with the subdomain being maps and uh, one of the following record types will be returned. The return responses are called resource records and they are always organized into these uh, six categories. So this is the schema for a re resource record. Uh, the name is the requested um, URL such as maps.google.com and then uh, there's a type class, a time to live and length and data. The time to live in this case is not the same time to live that we have in uh, an IP uh, PDU. That's a hop count time to live. This is a time to live in seconds. When the response returns uh, to the host, it um, is handled by a DNS resolver because there may be more than one destination returned in responses and uh, there can even be referrals which I'll talk about in the next sec uh, section. That response may also be placed into a cache with the corresponding time to live so that other requests to that same uh, URL will be handled by the cache and will not even uh, be sent to the DNS server. So here's a more detailed diagram of the example. Um, 
again our host is going to launch a request uh, to maps.google.com and that request will first be sent in most cases to a local DNS relay so in my home I have a DSL uh, gateway and that gateway is designated as my DNS server although I have a secondary server the DNS relay will forward the request to my ISP and the ISP will in general handle the response because the DNS lookup will be handled within the cache of the ISP. If we start at the root and look down on how this works, uh, we find that the registrars um, have uh, delegated or operate top-level domain servers. So these are servers that um, are designated for each of these top-level domains. So there's a .com top-level domain server. Uh, those servers don't handle requests directly in general. The namespaces are broken up and delegated to delegated zones. So we have a tree of zones with the root of the tree being the top-level domain. And then in this case, Google.com would be delegated to uh, an authoritative name server. And that is the only name server that's authorized to uh, put root records for Google.com or authoritative records, I should say, for Google.com. Moreover, the subdomains may be uh, further delegated or they could be handled within the uh, Google.com uh, registrar uh, delegated zone. The authoritative name servers distribute the records to uh, DNS servers such as ISP servers. Those servers, the ISP servers, are the ones that handle the bulk of the requests. Now, uh, there are different kinds of DNS servers that the ISP may operate. Usually they are called recursive name servers and caching DNS servers. Recursive name servers means that um, often aliases are uh, sent with the URL. So for example, maps.google.com may not directly translate into an IP address. Uh, and so a recursive name server would go to the uh, google.com domain and might find that there's an alias for maps.google.com so it might have to make a second request um, to the, canon uh, the canonical name for that. The canonical name uh, we can think of as just being the primary name for that address. And then the response would go uh, from my ISP back to the relay server and then the uh, DNS resolver would pass the host uh, address uh, to my service, HTTP, and then I can query uh, the uh, website that is associated with maps.google.com. So that's the way uh, the process works in general. The important points are that top-level domain servers do not handle requests directly. Uh, they delegate namespaces like google.com uh, to authoritative name servers and those in turn distribute uh, records to uh, DNS servers uh, in carriers, in ISPs, and in, in uh, other agencies. And then uh, the information is cached. Updates to uh, DNS servers are performed uh, on a static basis, that is, um, if an IP address changed in an authoritative name server, it does not automatically push all of those changes to uh, all of the uh, DNS servers and ISPs and other entities. It waits for the DNS records in the ISP server to expire <clears throat> when the um, uh, time to live exhausts. The time to live in a lot of ISP servers is set to four hours. There's uh, open source 
uh, DNS software called Bind, and it's used quite extensively, and that's the default uh, of a four-hour time to live. The implication of that is uh, that if you change your IP address uh, or perform another update to the authoritative record, uh, it's going to take a while for that to propagate down to all of the um, ISP or other uh, serving uh, DNS uh, name servers. It also means that the caches that are maintained on the uh, resolvers uh, will be stale. So it's often a good idea to flush your uh, DNS cache uh, on your host machine, and there are a variety of ways to do that. Um, but um, yeah, ipconfig will is one mechanism for flushing that cache, and that way you'll be sure of getting the most current record, at least from your uh, ISP for a destination. The other two facilities provided by the domain name system are one, a reverse lookup capability. Uh, you can, uh, with a utility like DIG, which I'll show you in a bit, uh, perform a reverse lookup whereby you send an IP address to a DNS server and you get the canonical URL or the con canonical domain name in response. That's very similar to the where is facility uh, that we saw earlier uh, at uh, whereis.aaron.net. The other point is that the domain name system contains not only the addresses of all of the uh, uh, IP destinations with their uh, URLs, it also contains the structure of the DNS itself. So um, ISP DNS servers have a database that tells them where the authoritative name servers are for the domains. And of course, it can find them also because it knows the root domain dot plus uh, all of the top level domains I've shown here. So the name structure uh, is part of the DNS system as well as the uh, resource records which we've uh, described. Here are some uh, references and suggested reading um, which you can read for yourself. I'd also like to show you uh, a bit about how uh, you can use some utilities on your host machine to examine DNS records in your DNS cache. So here's a command prompt window on Windows, and you can run the same utilities uh, with slightly different names on Linux. And I'm going to show you a utility uh, named DIG. DIG stands for DNS Internet Groper. And it can be uh, downloaded and placed as utility on your PC using the CYG Win uh, utility package. And I'm going to um, run DIG with a request to, for google.com uh, and I'll use the any argument which means return uh, all record types associated with that URL. And so we see a wide range of records that um, are in the DNS server and let's just give you a mark here. We see A records. Now an A record type is an IPv4 record. So these are multiple IP addresses associated with google.com. We see what are called uh, domain delegation records. So these are four of the name servers that Google uses, NS1 through NS4. We see quad A records. This is an IPv6 record, and we see mail records. So if you're using SNMTP uh, or you're trying to get an email resolution address, then these are the servers you would want to use. 
if we look at our uh, cache, want to look at our cache and see what has been cached on our host machine, we can use the IP config with a display DNS record. Um, again, we see no records because our time to live has expired. Uh, if I go back and refresh Google Maps like that, then we can go back and run that uh, display again and we see we've got a lot of records in our DNS cache and you can see that these are record type fives which is a C name record meaning that uh, this is an alias id.google.com for id.l.google.com so you see C name records and you also see a class A records wallet.google.com that translates to this. And that concludes this section.